you here. Thanks for coming. So you ready to hug that third rail? Okay. Um, I think I understand what you're saying in terms of the 70%, but I really feel like in order for you to make a go of it, you're going to have to articulate that really, really seriously because you're, my husband, for example, if he were here tonight and he's not here tonight because of your stance on entitlement reform, would be like, why are you attacking Social Security? Why aren't you defunding the immigrants who are coming across illegally? Why aren't you defund defunding welfare? Why aren't you defunding food stamps? How does the math work? Why, why are you going after Social Security? It's like, um, it's like Willie Loman said when they asked him, why do you rob banks? He said, because that's where the money is. All right? The problem is when you're spending 71% of the federal budget, if you eliminated everything else we do, not just the things that you just mentioned that ticked off on his list, but military spending, all our education spending, everything else we spend on, that's only 29% of the federal budget. You can eliminate all of it, all of it, and none of it. No more national parks, no more national defense, no more student loans, no more student grants, none of it. It still won't pay for it. And so the fact is, I'm not attacking Social Security, I'm protecting Social Security. See, those people who are ignoring this problem are the ones who will let a crisis happen. I would, you know, listen, I don't need to do this. I don't need to, like, have folks like your husband angry with me because they say, you know, why is he doing this? I'm trying to get votes here. But, you know, the fact is, I don't want to get votes on a false premise. And I don't want to be part of leading our country into a Greece-like situation. And everybody, that's where we're headed. That's where we're headed. If we don't do this, think about the debt we have now. $18 trillion in debt. We are going towards the cliff. And with the American economy not growing like it used to after a recession, we're getting to that cliff faster than we normally would. So bring your husband the next time, force him, sedate him, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to him directly. You sit him right next to you and point to him. I'll call on him first. Because that's what we do, and that's what we need to do in this country. We need to have direct conversations with people about the truth. I mean, I could sit up here and tell you we're going to do all these wonderful things and nobody's going to pay for anything. It's not going to cost anybody anything and no one is going to be hurt. We've heard that before. We've heard that before from Democrats and Republicans. It doesn't work. And so after six years in New Jersey of being the adult supervision in the room who had to say no after vetoing more bills than any governor in New Jersey history after five years as governor. I veto more bills after five years than any governor did after eight. And every one of those vetoes has been sustained because I've told people the truth, whether they want to hear it or not. That's exactly the way I'd govern as president, the way I've governed as governor of New Jersey. And I think if I had a crack at convincing your husband, I might get him there. I might get him there. So let's get, bring him next time. Let's try.